All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Josh and Brandy Helm here, and we are back at it doing another finished tour barnuminium of the Scurry project that we have going on here. And this is our second project here in, in Scurry, meaning not that it's down the road, but it's just across the driveway. <laughs> yeah, it's right next door. And this is one of those multifamily, not builds, but there's a couple of family members living on the same property. So. Which is kind of a neat thing. It's kind of new. A lot of people that we are building for now have, they're making ways and making preparations for maybe in-laws to stay or kids to come back or things like that. So they have, they're wanting, you know, family close by. So right into the details here on this build, this is a 2,030 square foot barnuminium build. We also have some porch space on the front and the back. 450 square feet. The bedrooms how many bedrooms we got here we have four bedrooms and an extra room it's kind of a it could be like a theater room or an office or a workout you could it's a flex space you could really do anything in there which is nice you just have a lot of alternate options here on a build like this it's more of a what we call a split design where you have the open vaulted space which is where we're at now giving you plenty of room for your living room also the versatility to section off your master suite having the open concept as well that leads you into all these areas allowing for that old texas open area is what we're going for open sky in in your house <laughs> And this one's got all the blues in it. We've, we've got the open sky in here. So starting with the exterior, we have a Hawaiian blue exterior panel and a burnished slate trim color. It's unique color, a little bit different than what you're used to seeing maybe, but this was their stamp of what they wanted. It really pops. Really yeah, we've done a couple of green ones, so this is our first blue one, so it's kind of neat to change it up. Also with the black accents on the outside, there is no stone on this one, but you could easily add stone on a build as you go about. But going through this build, this is our grand area it's with the kitchen, living. We don't have a fireplace in this one. I'm kind of a fan of not having some of those things sometimes. See, it becomes a little bit more complex in the build and it's just another critical thing that you're trying to add into the build. So it's kind of nice sometimes to not have those difficulties, involvements in the build, but here, keeping it simple, giving them lots of versatility in the living room because they can put their setup however they want to. And in our open area here, we have the stained concrete, which is a standard option in our builds. They are doing a natural stain color, which is giving it a little bit of enhancement for color. It's always good to do just a little bit of color because sometimes you'll have certain stains and these kind of things. But here we have the stained concrete throughout. So what's the colors on the paint? The the main color in this house is wondrous blue. It's Sharon Williams. But then I think the bedrooms are just a mild blue. So we have a couple of different blues that we're working with here. And one of the things about having these open areas, a lot of people are concerned about air conditioning and how to keep from having these high expenses when it comes to HVAC. The reasons why we're not as worried about that is because we're building for air tightness and we're capturing all of the heated and cooled air. Even in our attic spaces, those areas are allowed to absorb some of that heated and cooled air. So we create the envelope around the overall perimeter of the house. And the goal is to keep all of that heated and cooled air in that envelope, regardless of how high your ceiling is or, or not, you're not really taking that into an account for a loss of air because it's not going into some hot attic or something like that. Also, we're taking advantage of the open spans, which we're doing here on this build. Let's take a look at the kitchen. We have some stained cabinetry here. Yes, the stain has a little bit of a blue to it. It's actually an oyster gray. And then the countertops here are a Verde Peacock. So, Verde Peacock. Yeah, it's okay. a level one granite. And so it's it has some of those colors in there. So it kind of plays yeah, on that and, sponge. You know, sometimes people steer away from the level one granites because you have a little more of a pattern. But in this one, it's nice. It has that dark color. It's not too busy. So the, yeah, the pattern's kind of blended in. You're not really seeing a lot of pattern because it's so dark. Right. That does become a little bit of a challenge when you're trying to pick countertops is whether you're going to be too much pattern or whatever for your backsplash, which here we have the penny tile for the backsplash. 
which turned out really nice. And it has the browns and the blues, so it, it ties it all together. And then we've got the stainless sink, which is a drop-in style sink here on this one, which is a little bit different than what we normally do, but this is our selection here on this one, and it looks really nice. One thing I, on the sink, when you have the drop-in sink, you have, your granite is gonna totally wrap around it, versus like sometimes when we do the farm sinks, you actually kind of have to modify your cabinets to accommodate that. Like if you if you were to switch from now, uh, drop-in sink to maybe a remodel later, you wanted to do a farm sink, you're gonna have to, to modify those cabinets because you're not gonna have as tall of a, a cabinet door. Being in the remodel business that we used to be in, a lot of times we'd come in and we could modify cabinets and make that happen fairly easily. But when you're trying to sync up with stain and those types of things, like, and you're trying to make those modifications, it becomes a little more difficult at the end. But here, we've got a nice size island, of course, keeping with the stain grade, which shows our finished panels going around the island, which is always nice and having the legs on the front, which sort of gives it a, like a furniture. Yeah, like a piece of furniture feel, but it also allows a place for you to sort of tuck in your- Bar stools and- Yeah. Yeah, and chairs or whatever. So here we also have the power that we always put on the outside of the island. We usually try to put a darker plug or something like that there, that's a good, way to make them not stand out too bad. Now we have had clients that put plugs in the tops of the island, which is one like we did at the Rio Vista Barnuminium, which was kind of a cool- Kind of a pop-up yeah. plug, yeah. We have some beautiful upper cabinets, a lot of storage here, and it's a standard range oven with the microwave. One thing you'll notice where the refrigerator is gonna sit, because I say it's going to, because we don't have it's one here there, today, yeah. but the refrigerator is got a cabinet that sits around it. We always built these in cabinets as when the client chooses to go that direction. It's sort of something we, we try to incorporate when we can, but sometimes the designs go another direction. Yeah, so the pantry's kind of different on this one. It's kind of a, uh, I like the barn door. That's kind of a different. It is, it is different. It gives a different appeal for the pantry because we don't have a corner. Right. Put, put it in. This design is more, I guess what you call a flush mount pantry. Yeah, it kind of tucks in but like with the, the refrigerator cabinet. It kind of tucks in with all that. Yes, and it's not getting in the way of your kitchen or cabinet space because building a pantry in a corner, it really does take up quite a bit of space. So some of the particulars about this build, it's pretty good design because you have quite a bit of space with the room layouts. Yeah, there's a lot of rooms. We have four bedrooms. We have office and we have a play area or media room that could be used for that. And three full bathrooms. Going into the master suite area, let's talk about that for a little bit. So we have a 13 by 13 bedroom. This one actually has the, the master closet is actually off of the master bedroom and instead of in the bathroom. So that's kind of different. And it's got the double doors that leads us into the master bathroom. And in the master bathroom, we have our vanity with double sinks, which is his and hers. One of the things on the faucets is the oil rub bronze look going on here with our rectangle sinks, which is always an option. You can kind of go oval or rectangular, but here we're doing rectangle. Also, we have the private bullet area that's at the end of the master bathroom, which has some natural light coming in here as well. And then we have the walk-in shower. Yeah, this shower's huge. Yes. Got two heads, two shower heads in there. Has a really nice appeal to it. Kind of going more for that rustic look with the blended wood looking tile. It looks really nice. This one has the hot water heater in the master. So that would be great for getting hot water. You, sh you won't have to wait. <laughs> yes, and it's a hybrid electric water heater as well. So it has some uh, enhanced features that some of your standard water heater doesn't have. That's one of the things the clients wanted to do there. Of course, it's never fun, you know, trying to fit a water heater in, but it seems to work better when you can get this done on a lower level area somewhere where it's not above the head or in the attic area. We had a freeze a year or so ago and so many people were having so much trouble with their water heaters. Which uh, we shouldn't really have a huge problem with, with the fact that we spray foam all of our attics and all that. Yeah, having the envelope actually helps with that because you're, you know, even in your attic space, you have less worry about pipes freezing and those kind of things because your uh, absorption of all that in the envelope. So all the more reason why you'd prefer to have that system versus a, the, the normal uh, or not normal, but the old school uh, non-insulated attics, you know. 
So yeah, well, they just had the fluffy stuff on the <laughs> right. So coming from the master bedroom, uh, also we have the walk-in closet, which has uh, quite a bit going on there for shelves and cubby space, which is pretty nice. Also on this wing, I guess we call it the house, we have another smaller bedroom, which I guess you could use for a nursery or, or just a standard bedroom size. Yeah, and that's got the our standard walk-in closet here with the double door. Also on this wing of the house, I guess you would call it, we have a little bit of a hallway that goes between both rooms, leading to the one to the master. The other side goes to another small room, which is another bedroom. It's not a huge room, but a 10 by 9. All of these rooms have 9-foot ceilings in these areas. As we come back from this side of the house, we have another bedroom off of another little space, which no major or big hallways here, nothing like you've seen some of the other designs. Some people might say it's more usable space, not having to have huge hallways. Well, one cool thing about this little area, it's kind of its own little separation. It's got its own full bath, the walk-in shower, and then a bedroom. So it's almost like a little suite. The bathroom's not attached to the bedroom, but it's got its own little private hallway. Off of this area, like you attributed to a while ago, there is this other walk-in shower, similar tile that we're using throughout, and uh, it's curbed. We don't have a transitionless shower here, but we do have just your standard setup here for this shower and the tile going all the way up on the ceiling space. Now we do have another bathroom, which is off of the other little mini hallway that leads to another bedroom. Yes, we have a whole nother bedroom over there. It's a 13 by 10 bedroom. And then across from that is the laundry room. Yes, and laundry is pretty good size. We have a walk-through laundry room because it's leading off to the back porch. One thing we do have in here is a barn door and plenty of cabinet space and more of that countertop space, giving you plenty of room to hold laundry or do whatever you might want to do in there. That, stage, stage your groceries or however you wanted right. to do it. And that's what, actually one of our access to the attic is in the laundry room. Which is good. You got to have a space for that. Pretty simple on the play area. Uh, there is no closet in the play area or the office, but one could easily be added if you wanted to utilize that as uh, on, say, the real estate for an ad additional bedrooms, right. um, which would make this six bedrooms. So that's really what you're dealing with there. The, the, in the playroom, it's, it's a really big size in there. They've got, but there's no windows. We didn't put any windows in there. So really you could use it for so many things. You could do a theater room in there, like a, an extra living room. I don't know what room. you're thinking it would be used for. So. Not a Christmas closet. No. <laughs> craft room. Hey, that's what she would she, make it, a craft room. It'd be a great craft room. So crafting. Yeah. And, but it has an exterior door to it, so you could... You know, that's also another entry. Could be a mud room. A lot of mud in there. <laughs> Hope not. There's a lot of things you could utilize a space like that for. Or, you know, you could easily open that area up. This is not load-bearing walls other than the load of the studs that are there. So it would be very easy to uh, open that area up to the other common space. That pretty much concludes this tour for this build. It's nice to now be able to close out another build. There are more coming. There is more builds coming. We've got quite a few other builds wrapping up that are wrapping up. We're going to be doing two more this week. Drew is uh, stressed out right now, <laughs> but He's getting backlog. You know, we're trying he feels to, our pressure. Yeah, we're trying to get these <laughs> projects uh, wrapped up because we have more starting, you know, and and our goal and our effort is, is that we are uh, finishing more than we're starting right now. That's the, yes. that's the idea so that we are not, uh, you know, creating sort of a backlog um, on our production lines. And it'll hopefully be something a little bit more manageable for us as we continue forward. So for you guys that have been sort of seeing some of our stuff and kind of following us, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. Also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube. You, yeah. I mean, these are these are the main places where we are posting as often as we can. Uh, we're looking forward to doing more. We may crank the podcast back up. I don't know. We may do some of these things if we can have the time to uh, do it. We've just been sort of a tailspin trying to get so much done, but we're hoping for better uh, managed days ahead. And uh, we look forward to showing you guys more finished projects. So thanks for following along. 
I'm Josh Helm. And I'm Brandy Helm. We're wishing you all the best and thanks for watching. Texas Best. <laughs> <laughs>